Welcome, and thank you for purchasing Bachman's new Spectrum large-scale 55-ton three-truck shade locomotive built for railroaders by railroaders. This model continues the Bachman tradition of producing award-winning large-scale locomotives that began in 1997 with our original large-scale Shea. Your new three-truck Shea features die-cast power trucks with heavy-duty electrical pickups, a low center of gravity for more pulling power, a DCC-ready circuit board, and a voltage regulator on the smoke unit. Your new Shea is a precision 1 to 20.3 F-scale model with many of the features and details found on the prototype. These details include accurate crown and pinion gears on the power trucks, brake shoe assemblies, steam cylinders with all of the piston rods and valve gear found on the original, threaded truss rods, operating cab hatch and windows, boiler back head details, brass machine pop valves and bell, a brass plated whistle, black and metal handrails and stanchions, realistic tender water spout, a metal tender ladder and accurate Shea Sanders. Depending on which road name you have purchased, your Shea will come with either a coal load or oil tank in the fuel bunker, as well as a classic Shea tapered stack, a lima diamond stack, or a rustin stack, better known as an onion or cabbage stack. The fireman's side of the Shea also has lots of detail, including a separate siphon hose, a steam brake and or air brake with appropriate piping and all of the original frame support brackets. We work from prototype locomotives and actual drawings to painstakingly produce an accurately detailed model of this geared logging locomotive. Other features include a glowing firebox and ash pan, directional LED headlights, an operating smoke unit, and a polarity switch, which when it is in the center off position, allows you to park your Shea on any electrically live track until you're ready to roll. Slide the switch to one side or the other to run your Shea to either NMRA, NEM standards, or large scale practices. Just like the prototype, your DCC ready Bachman Spectrum Shea will perform smoothly and powerfully as it pulls trains at realistic speeds around curves and up and down grades on your layout. It features die-cast power trucks, motor mounts, and a new I-beam frame for strength, reliability, and a low center of gravity. Each truck is individually powered by heavy-duty electrical pickups connected to a large five-pole can motor with lots of gear reduction for a realistic top speed. There are two ball bearing races per axle for an all-wheel drive system that generates power to all 12 wheels. The Spectrum Shea is constructed using the most up-to-date construction techniques and materials available. And to accommodate large-scale modelers with all sizes of layout, Bachman has installed a unique third truck drawbar that will allow your new Shea to negotiate even the tightest of curves. And now, allow us to tell you a little bit more about the Shea locomotive and how it was the right machine at the right time. Late in the 19th century, lumbermen were faced with the challenge of how to supply sawmills with enough timber to meet the demands of a rapidly growing nation. The traditional methods of using horses and oxen or rivers to bring lumber to the mills was proving inadequate as the nearby forest had been exhausted and new sources of timber were located much farther away. In the late 1870s, a Michigan logger and entrepreneur named Ephraim Shea invented the locomotive that bears his name. The new Shea locomotive featured a unique geared drive system that enabled it to easily traverse the railroads that had been built up rugged grades and over mountainous terrain in order to harvest the increasingly remote forest. Conventional rod-connected steam locomotives have proved to be unsuitable for this job as they lack the muscle to pull long trains over the steep grades and they often tore up the lightly constructed tracks. Shortly after inventing his locomotive and putting it to use on his own logging operations, Ephraim Shea entered into a licensing agreement with the Lima Machine Works of Lima, Ohio. This agreement allowed Lima to produce Shea-type locomotives using Shea's designs and patents. Lima continued to improve on the original design and over the years was awarded several additional patents for the Shea locomotive. 
The early Shea models featured two geared trucks that were powered by a drive line that connected them to the steam cylinders and crankshaft located on the right side of the locomotive boiler in front of the cab. They typically weighed anywhere from 10 to 30 tons. Later, some two-truck Shays weighed up to 70 tons. As the United States approached the 20th century, the demand for lumber continued to grow, and it became increasingly necessary to transport cut timber even further distances. The two-truck Shays were not up to the task, as they had reached their operating limits in terms of tonnage and distance. It wasn't long before three-truck Shea models began to appear. The addition of a third geared power truck allowed for great pooling power and the oversized water tender placed on top of the third geared truck increased operating range significantly. In many cases, the two truck shades were relegated to retrieving short log trains from the loading points deep in the woods and bringing them to assembly areas where much bigger trains were made up and pulled to the distant mills by the three truck shades. Lima built each shade to a customer's specifications as to size, weight, the number of steam cylinders, number of trucks, type of cab, etc. As a result, almost no two shades looked exactly alike. Your new Bachman Spectrum large-scale model represents a typical three-truck, three-cylinder Shea weighing 55 to 65 tons and built by Lima from 1900 to the end of production in 1945. Although most three-truck shades were built to standard gauge, a few were also constructed for use on three-foot narrow-gauge railroads. Your new Shea is a model of a three-foot narrow-gauge three-truck Shea. Of course, the key to continued optimum performance from your new Shea is regularly scheduled maintenance. As it comes from the factory, your new Shea will require lubrication before you run it for the first time. Failure to perform this initial lubrication may result in damage to your locomotive. You should also lubricate your Shea after every 10 or so hours of actual running time, or as needed. The product engineers at Bachman have designed your new Shea so that lubricating it is a series of simple steps. To complete the lubrication procedure, you will need a flat, clean work surface, such as a countertop or workbench, and a fluffy towel. You will also need plastic compatible lubricants. We recommend Bachman's line of Easy Lube Professional Lubricants. However, any plastic compatible products will do. Remember, all of the chaise parts and lubrication points can be seen in the exploded view diagrams included in the instruction manual. To lubricate your shea before its first run, you must lubricate the rear tender truck and the rest of the locomotive. To do this, reach under the ends of the locomotive frame and gently lay the locomotive on the towel on its side so that the cylinders are facing up towards the ceiling. Next, turn the rear tender truck on its side on the towel. Now that you have everything in position for lubrication, please notice the lubrication plugs on the bottom of the power truck covers. You will now need to remove these plugs. You should not remove the bottom truck cover plates for any reason. All necessary lubrication can be completed through the lubrication ports in the cover plates. To remove the plugs, gently pry up one edge with either a flat bladed screwdriver or your fingernail. Grasp the raised edge and gently pull the plug from the hole. Follow the same procedure for each plug. We will now work on these areas. The front truck, the center cylinders, the truck just behind the cab and under the fuel bunker, and the truck under the rear water bunker and the complete drive line. First, take your light gear oil and lubricate all of the cylinder's moving parts. These include all of the rivets, piston rods, valve rods, and valve guides. Put a single drop of oil on each of the bearing surfaces. You do not want to overdo it so only put a drop on each part. Over lubrication can be just as damaging as no lubrication, so use the oil sparingly. Next, we will use the heavy duty gear oil to lubricate the rest of the drive system. Start by putting a drop of oil on each of the crown and pinion gears. Also, be sure to put a drop of oil where the line shaft enters the journal boxes on the front and rear 
both inside and outside of the gear cover. Then put a touch of oil on the drive axles where they exit the metal power truck housing. Be sure to do both axles on both sides of the motor housing. Remember to lubricate the other two power trucks using the same procedures. Now, put a drop of heavy gear oil on each of the exposed surfaces on the crankshaft located just below the cylinders. It is from this point that all power to the cylinders is applied. Once again, a drop or two at each point is adequate. Next, disconnect each of the drive shafts from the universal sleeves along the drive line. To do this, just turn each power truck so that the shaft can easily slide out of the universal sleeve as shown here. These parts separate easily, so there's no need to force them apart. Put a drop of oil onto each of the drive shafts. Now, it's time to work through the lubrication ports on the bottom cover of each power truck. First. Using your Easy Lube Heavy Duty Gear Oil, put a drop of oil on the motor drive shaft where it exits the motor housing. Next, put a drop of heavy gear oil on the spur gear, which is at the end of the motor drive shaft. Now, put a drop of oil on the primary gear on the drive axle. Also put a drop of oil on the ends of the drive axle where the ball bearing races are located and the axle exits the power truck housing. Be sure to perform this procedure through the lubrication ports on both ends of the power truck. Next, lubricate the power truck bearing surface where it connects to the frame. Once again, be sure to follow the same procedures on each of the other power trucks. For the next segment, we will use Bachmann's Easy Lube Gear Grease. This lubricant won't sling off or dissipate at high running temperatures. The best method to apply this material is by using a thin wooden applicator like this. If you don't have one available, then a toothpick, coffee stirrer, or even the tip of your screwdriver will suffice. First, lubricate the exposed crown gear using a moderate amount of grease. After running the locomotive for a few minutes, the grease will be distributed throughout the crown and pinion gears. Follow this process for both the front and rear trucks. Next, using a moderate amount of grease, coat the drive shaft and insert it into the sleeve by rotating the power truck gently. Work the shaft in and out. Remove any excess grease. Now, again working through the lubrication ports, put a small amount of Easy Lube Gear Grease on the primary gear on the drive axle. The grease will be distributed to the other gears on the idler axles as the shea is run. Again, be sure to perform this procedure on both drive axles in each power truck. Now, replace the lubrication plugs by simply pushing them firmly back into their holes in the bottom of the power truck cover plate. Double check that you have lubricated all of the required parts. Now, you are ready to apply the conductive lubricant Bachmann Easy Lube Conductive Contact Lubricant enhances electrical conductivity and will decrease the amp draw of your shea. The conductive lubricant is highly concentrated. First, put a single drop on each of the wheel treads. Next, put a drop of conductive lubricant on the back of each wheel. Friction is metal's worst enemy. So we recommend that you perform this electrical conductive maintenance every five to six hours of operation or as needed. When operating outdoors under high temperatures and other environmental conditions, there's a lot of friction, wear, and evaporation. More frequent lubrication may be required. That's it, your new Spectrum Shea is ready for its inaugural run. As it comes from the factory, the third power truck is not connected to the rest of the locomotive. Here's how you hook them together. First, put the locomotive on the track. Next, with the third truck laying on its side, push the two electrical plugs that come from under the fuel bunker into the receptacles on the bottom of the third truck water tender.
Now turn the water tender power truck upright and connect the drive line into the universal from the second power truck. The final step